Welcome back from that break. The federal government has approved a salary increase of between 25% and 35% for civil servants on the remaining six consolidated salary structures. Now, this move came on the eve of the 2024 Workers' Day event and was contained in a statement by the head of press at the National Salaries, Incomes and Wages Commission. Emmanuel Njoko made that statement though. Now, the increment takes effect from January the 1st this year. Tuluashe Olaniyo, my esteemed guest, is a renowned executive coach, business strategist, and a seasoned human capital professional. With a wealth of expertise exceeding 15 years in human capital development, Tuluashe has excelled in various domains such as learning and development, talent acceleration, talent management, and placement. Throughout his career, he has honed his skills in process, project, and people management, earning him an impressive reputation. Notably, Tuluashe has collaborated with esteemed brands across numerous countries, including the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, and Africa. Additionally, he serves as the founder of the esteemed Eagle Foundation. Many thanks for joining me, Tuluashe. Happy Workers' Day to you. Thank you so much for having me, Justin. Yeah. And, How are you doing? And happy Workers' Day. Same to you. Uh, let's start with the first stuff. How did you get here? How is, how, how is the world coming to the island today? Sincerely, it's not, it's not, it's not, not funny at all. Mm. I had to buy at one thousand naira per liter. Oh wow! Yes, mm. yes, and um, that's what the average Nigerian worker is facing. But we'll talk more with Toluashi. I'll take a quick break, and uh, we'll come back and uh, do some more discussions on the Workers' Day celebration in a moment. Do join us again. All right, welcome back to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa as we look at the plight of the Nigerian workers and uh, profit solutions in the midst of all of these uh, economic um, challenges. Tuluashi, thanks for staying with me. Thank you, Justin. All right, it's May Day celebration, and the average Nigerian that you talk to every day complains about uh, the lingering fuel issue, uh, electricity supply, yeah. and uh, you know the increment in tariffs, and uh, general economic challenges. Yeah. Is there a reason to really celebrate workers today? Um, so yes, I think there's a reason to celebrate workers, um, and I think it's because I mean for them, celebrating the hard work and the work that have been put into mm. um, into into livelihood and into what has been. Um, maybe unfortunately, the government um, have not before now done a whole lot. But fine enough, I mean fair enough, they are now beginning to take steps. Uh, before now, minimum wage used used to be eighteen thousand. Mm. I think. Some states are now struggling to implement mm. the 30,000, 33,000 naira minimum wage, right? Mm. Which, is, which is quite tough. An, an, an average household mm. spends no less than um, three to 4,000 4, naira every day minimum, right? Mm. Um, mm. If you go round these figures, so in, we say 3,000 naira every day times 30 days. Mm. So, I mean, so it means that the minimum wage is not even enough to keep a household mm. right but again should we really celebrate maybe the the, the 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 milestone of individual workers but in mm. terms of a general note i mean i don't think there's any there's anything to celebrate about yeah because right now on well, the statement the federal government issued just yesterday salaries um have been increased for various levels of um uh, the civil um service between 25 and 35 percent measure with the high uh uh, inflation that we have which is over 30 percent just how do we even look at surviving is it even realistic as in i feel it's a mismatch yes so so the current increase is almost um so it's a, it's an increase that's long overdue mm. so it's obviously a mismatch right because the cost of livelihood had gone up mm. inflation had hit right so it is tough for for us to find an equilibrium at this point, mm. right? But again, it's the right step in the right direction because mm. um, this, this, I mean, this is also moving forward. Okay. I'm hopeful that in the days ahead, the government will put in place better structure and better models to cushion the lives mm. and living condition of people, right? So uh, people who are like maybe percentage increase now, mm. is that enough to cover for the mm. cost of transportation to mm. work? Mm. Now, I mean, driving down here i saw a lot of people stranded so today is not even like the regular work day no, it's um at the public holiday but i saw a lot of people stranded on the road 
looking for how to get to work mm. now imagine if it's a regular work day people will people would get to work late mm -hmm. um there'll be accidents in the process of trying to struggle to get into the bus so i mean i don't think this is this is in the right place already but mm -hmm. i think it's the right step in the right direction um, and i think that more things should be put in place more modalities should be put in place to ensure that the life and living condition of of, of citizens mm -hmm. become a lot better okay fine with uh, one with all that is going on and the increment that has been laid now mentioned by the federal government one wonders what's even a living wage as it is now uh, two days ago we hear from the um, Edo state government that um, it is in increasing its minimum wage to about 70,000 naira but even with that uh, Nigerians are saying that um, it's still a far cry you know just I don't know because in in my head I'm thinking that uh, salaries are being increased and the uh, the market men and women will also increase the prices and uh, the inflation will still go high. So is there a way to circumvent all of this? People have talked about uh, not just uh, you know being focused or putting all your eggs in one basket and just spreading your wings as it were. So just what do we need to do in terms of um, um, unemployment? The rate unemployment is still very on the high side, and the average Nigerian who leaves school cannot even get some um, this um, gainful employment. So what do we do in all of these circumstances? Oh, okay. I mean, so thanks, Austin. And it's in two parts. Mm. Increasing minimum wage to seventy thousand mm. is amazing, right? Mm. I mean, just listen to what I calculated earlier. Mm. The minimum. Yes. For a uh, household now, yes, is thirty to, to I mean, is to is three to four thousand naira per day. Mm -hmm. So let's say three thousand naira mm -hmm. in thirty no, days. That's about ninety thousand naira. Yes. So which is so seventy thousand is a lot closer mm -hmm. than even the what the federal government is proposing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So so we are just the government's model. It's also like in right place. Yeah. But then we can do better. Um, what I think the government now needs to do is to do like. A market intervention and a regulation in all of this market right? intervention in what sense so when i say market intervention people increase the prices of food based on what they're able to bring mm -hmm. right okay so how are we able to ensure that from farm to town is is a seamless process such that the prices won't go up mm -hmm. right we have local market associations. How are we able to influence policies to ensure that these markets, men and women, do not just put their prices up, mm -hmm. right? So what we also do is they are mitigating against future risk. Okay. If I buy at 10,000 and I sell at... I need to make a margin somehow. Yes. Now, what we are doing now is they are making a margin to cover I for... Hurt. Yes, if they go to buy, right? No, but then with, pro with proper regulation and mm. structure, um, with the market systems that we have, we can make this work. Okay. Right. So, so government needs to put like government intervention in all of the market structures and market system mm. needs to be adequately put in place. Now, in terms of unemployment rates, we see a lot of private um, engagement mm -hmm. in this space at this time, right? And which, which I think is good, right? So, one of the leading banks in Nigeria is looking to train about four million people over. Um, over, I mean, over a period of time, mm. and not just train them, training the vocational skill, um, helping them get employment, mm. um, providing funding to them mm. through the U Drive project. Okay. Yeah, um, and I think these are like things that other institutions need to then begin to play. Yeah. Now, government alone cannot cannot be the employment driver. Okay, it needs to be a joint model between the public and the private. Now, with the youth drive projects that I mean, like oh, I mean that Access Bank is doing, mm. they're training all of these people, and they're training them in vocational skills. Mm -hmm. Now, these vocational skills would help a lot of people put food on their table. I will tell you that we have shortage, shortage of plumbers in this country. We have shortage of mechanics in this country. Mm -hmm. We have shortage of artisans in this country, right? But we did models like this where we, people are able to find something to do and they're able to put food on their table. Yeah. Now, I figure that the problem with Nigeria is not to pay. Mm. The problem is finding the right skill to be able so when when people say unemployment is high, I'm mm. like, see, we need to rechannel our energy mm. into TVET. Into, into TVET mm. and I mean rechannel our energy into some more products, into green jobs mm. and all of that. And not just focus on the regular uh, white collar jobs because okay. um I mean they are beginning to 
thin out, right? But Tibet and other models are a way to expand mm -hmm. um, the job market and get a lot of people into the stream. Okay, we, you and I have talked about Tibet on this show before. Yeah, and yes. uh, we, we said it is a panacea to the issue of um, employment that we have in the country. Yes. But uh, um, you just talked about uh, a particular bank, Access Bank to be precise, and yes. uh, what they are doing as regards that. You know, but that's just one. Why are we not really getting Tibet right? Before now, we've, we, we had like lots of um, technical and vocational um, institute right there, but it's as though these people are just trained somehow. I don't know if they're really trained on what is, uh, you know, uh, contemporary and um, if uh, just training is enough and uh, what about the, the, the funds that they need, um, startup grants and all of that, and who monitors all of that? Oh, yeah. So, um, in terms of in terms of that, mm. it's also tricky, right? Because mm. there are organizations, there are institutions, yes. NAPTEB and all of that, mm. basically set up mm -hmm. to um, to provide adequate learning um, and also see to these people post learning. But the unfortunate path is, um, I'm not sure that the models are being strengthened as much as they should. Mm. I think learners also now learn just to earn a certificate, just to say, I have an OND in this. An average individual who just finished mechanical engineering, um, OND, HND, is probably not looking at setting up a garage. He's looking at, where can I work mm -hmm. with these certificates? And unfortunately, that's like the challenge, right? So I have placed people who have finished their I mean, like OND and HND yeah. with mechanic workshops, and in the next one and a half years they now set up their own workshops yes right and i think we need to begin to find ways for the academia and the labor market mm -hmm. town and gown and merge both of them so that so people who did um automobile engineering can find placement with with regular mechanics okay. work for a bit on the study the, the business of the business mm. and then can then understand what they want to do okay. right and not just begin to look out for where to where to work the guys who did electrical engineering mm. can be paired can be paired with organizations who do this check for a bit but unfortunately what everybody wants to do is post graduation they are looking out for where to work okay. with their certificate okay um which now pulls them back from putting the skill to use actively okay. so this is what has affected like the um the, the increase in, in the volume of people who practice from the technical institutes all right fine uh, so let's really get back to the government and policies okay. for sake of time now you know you know in all of this uh, a school of thought just believes that uh, we have a bit of a um, policy some sort and just uh, putting on so much in the cart then it becomes too um, overburdened for us yeah, yeah. you know as in in the wake of um, a year uh, of um, this present administration mm -hmm. lots of um, policies have been made and they have really beating hard on nigerians you know and with inflation the uh, next thing we are hearing of uh of band a band b band c electricity tariffs and uh, fuel uh you know subsidy removal fuel scarcity and a whole lot of that is it that we are not putting all our uh uh we're not really maximizing all that we need to or we just uh, come up with policy without really carefully thinking them um out through before imposing all of these hardships on nigerians um so i think what the government is doing mm. is trying to do so much so um so that they cannot begin to build on it mm. but i think it might not be a really really mm. interesting model mm. right because <coughs> excuse me there are a lot of policies out there yeah there are a lot of SSCs, lots of parastatas, mm. and a few of the parastatas, a few of the offices have intertwined responsibilities. responsibilities. Yes. And at the end of the day, the duplicity and everything. Exactly. At the end of the day, the, the, the masses and the mm. beneficiaries mm. of these policies become confused. In fact, the executors mm. of these policies are now not even sure where to start, right? Mm -hmm. Which I think. Right. Is, is one of the biggest problems, right? Mm. However, I think that we can like retrace the step. I mean, again, what they will say is in our second term, we'll mm. consolidate on okay. this, right? Mm. But again, I think that we need, I mean, I think the government needs to take a few steps backward. Okay. I begin to say, see, what are the important things? Yeah. The electricity tariff is, is tough. 
you can't take up you can't take up electricity tariff and at the same time take up subsidy mm. on fuel. Yeah. Because we are heavily reliant on generators. Of course. So how then do we yeah. Yes, yes. How then do we do we alternate if this is the problem, right? All right. So I mean so we need to begin to Okay. To, 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 to and yeah. take uh, more proactive measures yes. before you know unleashing a terror as it were on nigerians so uh we, we wish you could then um, talk some more but as it is right now we need to bring you back again because there are lots of things we need to talk about entrepreneurship uh you know okay. workers and of course uh, just general um efficiency and growth in the country yeah. tolu uh the olani has been my guest and we've been looking at the plight of nigerian workers in this uh, may day celebration many thanks uh, to Lou for being a part thank of you so show. much for having me here austin always a pleasure Pleasure. Thank you so much. And that's the size of the show for today. I am Justin Academy. Uh, many thanks for being a part of it and happy Workers' Day to you once again. See you again next time.